Hello everyone, I'm Black Marvin, I'm a progressive psychedelic trance artist, and I'm also a professional sound designer. It's no secret that I really like the Kilohertz plugins, and there's a new snap-in available, it's called Convolver, and I'm going to show you how to use it today. Also, we're going to do an overview today, but I don't know if you've noticed, but Kilohertz on their own YouTube channel, they usually do a pretty good job at doing an overview of their plugins. So, Yes, I'm going to do that, but I'd rather show you a freaky example and how uh, I, we can use it uh, and in a really creative way. And that's usually what I try to do with these snap-ins. Yes, there's, there's so, always a sort of uh, standard way to use them, but there's also some really creative possibilities. And we're going to focus on that today. Just before we dive in, if you want some more content about the Kilohertz plugins and some more sound design tips, don't forget to like and subscribe. To this channel and let's go let's have some fun with convolver this is kilohertz convolver with this plugin you can add different impulse responses to your sound instead of explaining you the mathematics behind the process i think the best way uh for for your mind to understand what it does is let's say you're taking a picture or a snapshot of a reverb response and you're loading it into the plugin and then you can get that specific reverberation behavior. What I like about this plugin and other kilohertz plugins is that there's so much room for creativity. There's the basic use of the plugin, which in this case, uh, you know, the Convolver, usually it's uh, used as uh, a reverb or to load different, um, different reverbs uh, in it. And we can actually see this uh, if we go into the obvious ones, you know, this, the spaces. Uh, let's just uh, run through a, a couple of these. Modern Church. So you kind of get the idea. These are different reverbs and already just with that, that's really, 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 really cool. And... I don't know if you've ever felt that way, but even though the, the, the kilohertz uh, reverb is cool, it's kind of limiting, but um, not anymore. You have so many uh, possibilities and yeah, you have some sort of basic, uh, like obvious reverb responses, but you have some other ones. Uh, let's say you have even some glitches. You have some microphones one. So you're, you're, you're getting other uh, types of responses and, you know, just, I don't know if you hear it, but in, in my head, of course, it's not, the process is not filtering per se, but in, in the, your sound design process, you could, in my opinion, almost consider that sometimes as a filter or, or a way to mess with the, the timber easily, because, you know, if you, if you go right here, we can stretch that. So, uh, that, that, that really has an effect, uh, on the file, uh, and well, that has an effect on the response. So that has an effect basically on the behavior of the convolving process. <laughs> I don't know if you understand already what I mean as considering that as a filter in your your sound design process, but that that could definitely be a a way to to filter things. You can also uh, adjust the tone all the way to the left is towards low frequencies, and all the way to the right to the high frequencies. So it sort of tilts the response. You have a feedback here and it's basically going to cycle through the, the, the process, uh, the convolution process more if you put more feedback and w the result is uh, a bolder effect. So you can kind of hear that it's just get more intense. There's a delay here and if you use it uh, with zero feedback, it really acts purely as a sort of pre-delay. And uh, if you put a lot of feedback and if you put some, well, it, it, on time, you can have that, but also in sync, it's even more noticeable. You can get some, some, some delays, almost like standard delay response. Mm -hmm. 
this is really cool. I already see uh, myself doing a lot of stuff inside Snap Heap, multipass with that, taking the Convolve signal and applying a lot of modulations to it. And that's one of the really cool things with the Killheart's ecosystem is that when there's a new plugin like this, uh, it's not just one standalone new plugin. You know, you, we're going to make it interact with the rest of the Killheart's ecosystem very soon. So I want to talk to you a bit more about the fade in, the fade out and the stretch. But for that, I'm going to get a bit. It's going to be more noticeable if I get something like this, uh, just a more classic reverb response. So we can stretch it, uh, stretch that signal. So a bit like if you're pitch stretching a, an audio sample, um, what if you let's say you stretch it very short, you're going to have a very short response. And let's say you, you stretch it, uh, you, we can stretch it even more and you, you have a, just a bigger uh, response. And let's remove a bit of tone. So it's, yes, it's the size, but it's not just the size because there's some, it's like you're pitch stretching it. So, uh, you're kind of changing the tone as when you're stretching it, you're not just stretching the size, you're stretching the tone also. Um, and you can have a fade into that response. And a fade out. So, and yeah, in this case, you heard that the, the, the with no fade in it's a more direct response while the the other one all oh, kind of lean towards the pad behavior last thing i want to show you on that interface is that uh reverse here and that's really cool we can we're gonna just uh, get something quicker uh maybe like a delay response We're going to stretch it very, uh, it's going to be a short one. So let's hear, this is uh, without the reverse. We can get that. And remember that it's all, the mix is all the way up. Let's reverse that. Yeah, this one is kind of blurry, but I think you already get the idea of the reverse. But let's just get something like this. I have another one here. I have the digital dice. This one is really like meant to be a, a delay. You can hear that there's a nice delay play to it, but if we reverse it, it's cool, but there's not much going on right here. And you know, the, the hot stuff from the in, impulse response is here and we want to have more of that. So we can just drag that in and interact only with this uh, we could actually even only interact with this with small slices like this it's we're kind of leaving the reverb realm and we're more in the almost tone shaping uh, realm so that that's uh, a bit closer to the Almost like what I was describing, that you can almost sometimes use it as a filtering tool uh, and you can use it as a reverb tool and uh, th that's there's many possibilities. And now that I've shown you all the parameters, let's make it interact with the rest of the kilohertz ecosystem inside Faceplant. So I've shown you this preset at the beginning. And uh, let's see now how we can use it. So I have an army of Convolver here inside Multipass and I'm going to break it down to you uh, what's going on. What I did is I have a pigments preset here and it sounds like this. It's called Phoenix of the Forest and it's from Citrans Fusion, a Citrans bank for pigments that I did for Fractal Sound. The link will be in the description. What I did is I recorded that uh, preset and that is the result. This is not really a reverb response, but even though when we load that inside Convolver, 
it uses that as the impulse response and we can get some really interesting result with that. So all these convolvers, they run the, uh, this particle 01. For now, I'm going to mute these. I'm, we're just going to listen to these. You can see that in this first lane, uh, for each band, there's a different settings. Um, I kind of, I wanted to, I, I shaped a specific response and a specific behavior. So this is how it sounds. But you can hear that if we play with the stretch of each band, we're, we're going to have different results. Especially with the high band here, we can, if it's a really stretch, uh, it's, if it's tight, we really get some sort of pinch on the high frequency, while if it's longer, we get the, like a longer tail effect. And now what I did is a sound design trick that I recommend a lot with the kilohertz plugin. So Basically, when you have something cool, why not try to have two of that? So I just clone them. You can see that I have uh, different settings on each of these. And the whole idea was just, again, to uh, tone shape this big, um, big, big, big impulse response. Um, because this one feeds into this one. And so they, they interact with each other. And that's the final result. So you can see that I added a reverb here. Uh, I just wanted to have a bit more of a reverb tail. Actually, I could have used uh, another convolver here with uh, just a big space response, but I, I, I wanted to stay uh, classic for this. So this basically just gave a longer uh, reverb tail. And something is important here. Uh, it's I used the NOTT from uh, Multipass to Multipass preset. Uh, inside here, Dynamics and OTT. This multipass preset is a recreation of the OTT and this is a upward and downward compressor. What it does, uh, you have a tone uh, shaping knob here and uh, in a very similar way actually to you know this one, uh, all the way to the left, it's more inclined towards lower frequency and all the way to the right, more to the high. So that was sort of an a second and a last uh, occasion for me to just shape and tilt the filter once again. And with the upward compression, uh, really, it really just brought up all those levels here. And same thing for the tone. Uh, in my opinion, it was less aggressive here because when it's too much to the right, it starts to get a bit uh, uh, too pinchy. And one last thing I would do uh, for that is to just get a filter right here. And I'm going to just make a small notch because it starts to get resonant a bit. Yeah, that helped a bit to, to tame the frequency. And also one thing you need to check is the latency. But in this case, what is what's really cool also with the Convolver is that it's pretty low latency. Um, there's a snap-in from Kilohertz that is called the Ensemble. And he, you see that, that jump to almost 20 uh, milliseconds of latency. This is quite uh, well it's not heavy in you know in the big picture of a project but inside a multipass preset this can get a bit heavy uh, but what's really cool about the convolver is that they made it pretty low latency so you can either stack some of them and you know have some stuff like this one last thing i did inside faceplant is that i wanted to have um, some more control over the release so 
in multipass there's uh, this macro here which controls all the mix level of each convolver this one is not necessarily used here inside faceplant but it's rather uh, used uh, by linking it to the envelope in order to have just better control over the, the release of the sound. I could actually have even more control of the attack, but in this case, that would mean I have here, just that, that for that moment, there's like a, some of the dry signal. Which it could be cool, but is not what I want. I want the, you know, I want the, the convolving process to be heard right away and then to f slowly uh, decay over time. So rather than making a very long video, I'm going to stop there and uh, maybe in the future do some more videos about other uses, but... Uh, I wanted to show you that specific like atmospheric trick and that uh, trick also with uh, bringing in some funky impulse response to get some some very freaky sounds out of them. I hope you enjoyed. And that's it for this video. The Killer Hearts ecosystem just got even more interesting. If you feel you need some one-to-one -one mentoring, you need some group lessons and you need some help, don't forget to check out my community of students. The link is in the description. And until then, I wish you go have some fun. With that awesome plugin, I'm going to see you in another video.